And we saw the same thing with the Cubs and, and Justin Steele and what he did there with the Cubs. And Dylan, you can you can let me know what you make of Justin Steele get into that Cubs clubhouse. I think with Justin Steele, um, you, you look at Justin Steele and what he brings. That's just a fierce competitor. It's a guy who just goes out, takes the baseball. I know he had the hamstring injury earlier in the year, but Steele is just trying to give life to that dead club that goes out there every single day and puts up pitiful offensive numbers. There, um, <clears throat> the bullpen is atrocious. I just think with Steele, he's trying to light a spark because maybe we can go back on it here. I'm going to say it. I think Craig Council is a reason for some of this. Mm. I know that you can say, like, I mean, now is an easier take to make, saying the Brewers are still fantastic with losing two aces in their rotation and trading, like, trading away one of them. But I think when you look at it, you lose your manager like that. <clears throat> David Ross was a player's guy. And he showed some fire. I mean, you've seen him play with an edge. Council's just a strategist. He sits there chewing his bubble gum. He doesn't say much. He just he watches the game and is analytical, driven. I know he was a player too, but he's not that fiery guy that's going to wake up a club and say, this is unacceptable. And that's exactly what Steele said in his message. He said, look, this has gone on. It's one thing for this to happen a week. All right, yeah, it's a rough week. We didn't hit the ball. That's fine. This has been going on since the end of April the end of April. And you're just now saying that message. That's something that should have been delivered a long, long time ago. There's enough veterans in that clubhouse that have won championships. Dansby Swanson, Cody Bellinger, those guys need to step up and say something because if not, you're going to lose the team and the team's already lost. I think there's, it's not an early season collapse. It's a year long collapse at this point. Um, The expectations were high coming into a very winnable division from the outside looking in. Right now, that doesn't even look like it's even on the horizon. Um, And there's no reason to add at any deadline. There's no reason to subtract either. You're just in a lull spot where you can't do anything, and and you're just stuck with what you got. So when you you mismanage and misanalyze an offseason in terms of how well your club is, this is what you pay with when it comes to the repercussions. Yeah, I'm going to connect this back to the Yankees a little bit. I think this team, the Yankees, are cut from the same cloth. And what I mean by that is uh, by management, uh, general managers, Jed Warrior and Brian Cashman. I, I think this Cubs team, I think this roster is poorly constructed. It looks good on paper just by looking at the names. Christopher Morrell, Cody Bellinger, uh, uh, Seiya Suzuki, Dansby Swanson. It looks so good on paper but that lineup just isn't producing. The names are not producing. They need to figure out what to do with uh, Pete Crow Armstrong. Three for 23 on the road trip. That is embarrassing. Send him back to Iowa, get him some help, have him figure it out. The catchers in that lineup have been non-existent. I mean, what's going on there? And how much longer can you throw Kyle Hendricks out there? I know he had two good starts here recently, but it was almost fool's gold, pretty much fool's gold. How much longer? Can you keep throwing him out there on that mound? He can't do it against an NL Central team. I know he had one good start against the Pirates. I'll give him that. But the Pirates have usually lit him up. The Reds, you put him in Great American Ballpark, he's a guaranteed five-plus earned runs. The the teams have seen him so long in the division that when you see someone that throws 88 miles an hour multiple times, you just learn it. And it's easier to adjust to 88 than it is that 99 Maybe you have his number and he throws 99, but it's still something you have to adjust to. When you're throwing 88, you're losing that touch. You're only going to get rocked. So, I mean, there's so many issues with the team. I'd probably cut 15 players if I was in charge now um, and just let it ride from there. But there's just so much going on that it's it's honestly embarrassing. They're they're the hardest watch in the league right now. And I'll put that down. So in your opinion, is this something that can't be – Resolved. There's no solution. This is a lost season. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, not not in 24. There's wow, no way okay. they can come back. I mean, even if players get hot, that offense is broken. They're like they are they are historically bad through the lineup. There are multiple guys. There's like four players in the lineup hitting under 210. Oh man, that can't happen. And Swanson's hitting 213. Like that, it's so bad. Guys having bad years at the worst time. Suzuki pulls his oblique every third day. So. <laughs> I mean, there's just there's a lot to break down there. Oh man, that is unfortunate.